गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द ऑनलाइन टीचिंग सेशन ऑफ एकेडमिक वर्ल्ड स्कूल में मित्रा माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज माय थर्ड लेक्चर ऑन द सेम टॉपिक यू कैन सी हियर बिजनेस एनवायरनमेंट एंड टुडे आई विल बी जस्ट टीचिंग दिस टू सब टॉपिक्स यू कैन सी हियर थ्री मेजर कंपोनेंट्स और एलिमेंट्स ऑफ न्यू इकोनॉमिक पॉलिसी दैट्स नंबर वन सेकेंड इम्पैक्ट ऑफ चेंजेस इन इकोनॉमिक पॉलिसी ऑन बिजनेस or we can say effects of liberalization and globalization so my dear students i will start with the first topic that is three major components of new economic policy that is the first one is liberalization second one is privatization and the third one is globalization so i first start with the point of liberalization it means end of it means end of लाइसेंस कोटा और अदर रेस्ट्रिक्शंस और अदर रेस्ट्रिक्शंस व्हिच वेर पुट ऑन द इंडियन इंडस्ट्रीज और व्हिच वेर ऑन द इंडियन इंडस्ट्रीज बिफोर द न्यू इकोनॉमिक पॉलिसी ऑफ 1991 नाउ व्हाट आर द मेन पॉइंट्स आई विल जस्ट राइट इट आउट वन बाय वन द फर्स्ट वन इज राइट विद द स्टार मार्क abolition of abolition of license except in few second point will be no restrictions on expansion expansion and contraction of business activities third is reduction in taxes and uh, removal of unnecessary controls first i will explain this three dear students you just have a look then i will go for another three points liberalization means if end of it means the end of license quota or other restrictions before the new economic policy came of that is of 1991 previously indian companies there were a lot of license quota and there are many restrictions so they tried to remove all these things and the main thing which happened here in this liberalization was abolition of license now what does abolition of license mean abolition of license means finishing of that means taking away of the abolition of the rule that means taking away of the rules and then no restrictions on expansion and contraction of business activities and reduction in taxes and removal of unnecessary controls now we have liberalization liberalization of imports and exports liberalization of imports and exports more liberal liberal means freeness more freeness then we have uh, freedom in freedom in fixing up of fixing up of prices of goods commodities goods commodities and services now you see here liberalization of imports and exports it means making it more free more liberal imports and exports why if you make the exports more liberal more foreign exchange are going to come imports after the new economic policy came more liberalization took place for imports many uh, raw materials were imported self finished goods were imported so liberalization meant that the companies will get more and more liberal they will become more and more liberal so that things can become more easier and then we have freedom in fixing up of the prices of goods and commodities the companies were free to fix up the prices of goods commodities or services even services are also included for example say different type of services 
So, and then making the rules easier, making the rules easier to for the industries, for the industries to attract more and more more and more foreign more and more foreign investments and capital the best word will be to attract more and more investments so dear students i have just told about the first now we will go with the second and that is i'll just rub it out the second one is privatization This is the second of the topic under the major components. Giving more role to the private sector and reducing the role of public sector. Giving more roles to private sectors and reducing the role of public sectors. Now, what happened? Why did the new economic policy did this? Because it was a policy to uh, give more, bring more privatization of the uh, business and to reduce the role of private sectors. Now here, one thing is very important, that is, the few important points you mentioned here, disinvestment, disinvestment of public sector. As I already told, you might know that giving more roles to private sector and reducing the role of public sectors. So the first point here comes disinvestment of disinvestment of public sector. Second is setting up of setting up of BIFR. And this means board of industrial and financial reconstruction board of industrial and financial reconstruction now why the BIF was set up this was mainly set up to help or revive the sick units this board was set up to revive or help the sick units let me give an example dear students you might know that when we fall sick whom do we uh, go to? We go to a doctor and uh, the doctor sees how is our health and accordingly tries to revive our health. He prescribes some medicines, some different type of uh, you know things so that we are revived. So he want, the doctor's main task is to make us okay and he keeps on trying till we are okay till the last moment he keeps on trying. So this board was mainly set up to revive or help the sick units or to or to sell the units. Sell the units we can call it or to sell the units. Now what is this? If here BIFR means it's an organization, it's a body which 
whose main task is to revive and help the Sikh units. Here, units means business units, business houses. Sometimes what happens, the profits of the houses are much lesser than their expenses. So we call it as a Sikh unit because they are not able to uh, run properly. So BIFR was set up to mainly help those Sikh units and by giving them financial support, different type of supports, ideas, so that they can come up and continuously they used to help them for two years, three years, whatever it is. But if still after tryouts of all this, if an organization is not able to revive, then close the units, close the units. Their best word will be or to close the units or to close the business. Why? Because otherwise continuous losses for a business will have an impact on the society because we cannot continuously have a loss, 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 loss for years and years and somebody goes on giving us support, support, support continuously. So it cannot happen. So this board was actually mainly set up to help the sick units. And then thirdly we have dilution of the dilution of the state of the government. Dilution of the stake of the government. Dilution of the stake of the government. Now, what does the word dilution mean? In this process, in this process, dilution of the stake of the government. In this process, if a private sector in this process, if a private sector, if a private sector holds more than or purchases or acquires more than fifty one percent shares, then the ownership and management gets transferred, ownership and management both gets transferred, gets transferred to private sector. Just transfer to private sector. Okay, this was the second topic which we are going for the first first subtopic, three major components. I just told you about two major components. Now I will rub it out and start with the third that is called globalization. Third, globalization. It refers to integrating integration of various economies of the world. Dear students, here you have to understand the meaning of globalization. It comes from the word globe. You know globe means our globe, that is the world. So when the new economic policy was adopted, that is post-1991, that this came in the year 1991, the third important element was, or the component was the globalization. It means, refers to integration. Integration means bringing together, coming together integration of various economies of the world. Now, what did we get to integrate? Because it was a policy through this uh, new economic policy that we all will work together and the whole world becomes a common and a small village. Now, number one, first important thing. Can you guess what are the important things? The first one is import liberalization. 
import liberalization setting up second one is fera f e r a uh, dear students i am going to explain next fera has been replaced by fema now what is this fera foreign exchange regulation act this was before 1991 see the word regulation regulating so there was a regulation of the foreign exchanges that was before 1991 but as the new economic policy came we adopted the new economic policy india adopted the new economic policy now it has become foreign exchange now this is this one and this fera is this one now it has become foreign exchange management act management act now you might be seeing here what's the difference between these two the first one is regulation and the second one is management management means this came after the new economic policy of 1991 that means when the new economic policy came this also came now it is management before that it was regulation so i think you understand the difference between the regulation to regulate and now it is to manage not to regulate now after this what will be the third one the third one is abolition of abolition of export duties export duties and reduction of import duties abolition finishing meaning finishing of export duties new economic policy main point was to make more and more exports why because the country was thinking to gain more and more foreign exchange to get more and more money by making more and more exports all the industries were thinking from that manner abolition of export duties removal of export duties people started exporting more and more what was the result the result was more foreign exchange was earned by the nation our foreign exchange reserves became bigger and bigger and bigger and then next point reduction in the import duties you know previously there were more restrictions on import of goods heavy duties were there but with the new economic policy got it right restrictions of reduction of import duties that means import duties has been reduced i'm not telling completely gone but reduced reduction now many industries need semi finished goods raw materials for making their exports or for making their goods for their production so import duty was reduced now they can easily import those things according to their need according to their necessity from where from other nations from other countries so this was the first topic i have just ended what are those three the first i went with liberalization second i went with privatization and the third i went with globalization now this topic has been over now i'll start with the second topic impact of changes in economic policy now as you see the economic policy was adopted now what was the impact of this new economic policy or effects of liberalization and globalization okay 
effects of effects of liberalization and globalization we'll study in almost 7 to 8 points now what were the impacts of this new in policies increasing competition increasing competition first point dear friends you know what is competition you better know now what happened as the new economic policy was adopted in the year 1991 the main thing which the nation saw our country saw was see previously there were many industries, those industries were there, but the competition was less because the economy was not opened up. Country was doing okay, there were many industries, they were doing their work, but the competition was less, much less. Of course, I will not tell it is not there, but much less. Previously, the competitions were much less, but as our economy was opened post-1991, as our economy was open, try to understand, more and more global corporates, more and more global businessmen came into our nation. MNCs, you know that, multinational corporations, and they came with high technology, enormous managerial abilities, very good marketing strategies, and uh, most importantly, they were much ahead in technology than Indian companies. Now, what was the reaction? The reaction was increase in competition, more and more competition, intense competition. Now in this situation, which company survived? The Indian companies tried to survive. They wanted to come up and they wanted to be in competition. They tried to develop their own things, more technologies. And in this situation, those companies, those who are having better resources, better capabilities, they survived. And those institutions, those companies, those who are not having better uh, technologies, better uh, resources, they tried to fade away from the business or they had to stop their business. So this was the first and what was that? Increasing competition. Second is more demanding customers. more demanding customers now try to understand this point what is more demanding customers customers always demand more if see before uh, the new economic policy came mainly indian market was a producer oriented market mainly it was producer oriented previously Before the new policy, new economic policy of 1991, the Indian market mainly was producer oriented. Now, what is this producer oriented? Indian companies knew whatever we produce, people have very little choices, they have to purchase. There is no options, they have to purchase. Producer oriented. First, the producer is to produce and then go to the market to sell. They were knowing that things will be sold. But, try to understand when the new economic policy came, different companies, multinational, as I told in the first point, they came into the, our country. The public or the customers, what happened? Try to guess. They got more and more goods. Choice was very more. In fact, in other words, better words, the choices were high now. Previously, the customer used to select from two, three products. They have to buy one if they want to buy. But now, as the 
economy was open, more and more products came because many companies came into the country and they gave their best products, te technically high products, good products. So Indian customers were actually now having more options. So now it changed from producer oriented to, but after 1991, the things changed and market be became customer oriented, customer oriented. Now what is the meaning of customer oriented? Now customers are the main kingpin of the market. Customers are the main kingpin of the market. Kingpin of market. Every company tried to attract the customers by trying to know what is their preferences, likings, desire and they used to produce the goods according to that. So the point is now supported more demanding customers. They demanded more and the market became customer oriented. Number three is technological environment. Technological environment. Technological environment. Try to understand. What is a technological environment? It is connected with technologies. See, again and again I am telling the things. Before 1991 with the new economic policy, before the new economic policy, Indian companies were there, but as the new economic policy came, many multinationals, those who came into our country, they brought highly advanced technical products. Indian customers had did they saw that the products were very highly technical in that means in nature they were highly technical so what happened Indian companies faced great deal of competition because they were not that much prepared they never thought that we will be facing such a competition of from other uh, producers from other companies and those they will come up with most latest technological products so what happened? Indian companies faced stiffer competition, more competition, acute competition we can say. And so Indian companies felt a need to upgrade their technologies, to make their technologies much better so that they can keep parallel to the industries coming from outside. Otherwise they are going to be faced away, otherwise they are going to lose the battle. So, in order to cope up with this, Indian industries put more uh, budgets, more expenditure on research and development. We go to the fourth, necessity for change. Necessity for change. Now, what is the necessity? Why do we call necessity for change? Before 1991, the policies of the Indian government or the business policies were somewhat more stable. That means it was stable, not that much bigger things were there. But the moment the new economic policy came and the more and more uh, businessmen tried to come inside and they came also into our country, not tried to come, they came inside our uh, country and they started doing their business. Indian business, Indian industry saw that rapidly the things are changing, the situations are changing and so there was a need, necessity for change, continuously change. the market situation was changing, technology changing from time to time and uh, there was a need to, uh, there was a need to bring more uh, changes according to the situation. So, the policies kept on changing. That means the, the industries, they kept on changing the policies or strategies according to the need of the situations. The need, next one is, I'll just rub it out. Next one is number five, fifth point. 
Next is number fifth point, and that is need for developing, need for developing human resources. human resources better human resources before the economic policy came indian companies were managed and run by inadequately trained personals they were trained but it was felt that after the new economic policy came there was a comparison and it was felt that they were inadequately trained but as the new economic policy came now i am trying to explain as the new economic policy came and our country saw a great deal of foreign companies who came with advanced technologies, advanced managerial capabilities, advanced marketing strategies, advanced distribution techniques. There was a sea change in this country as far as business is concerned. So the Indian industries were, as I told, were facing a lot of competition and they felt the need they understood that there is a strong need and strong uh, things which a strong need a necessary a necessity to develop good and strong human resources now why was it failed because they want to keep they want to be parallel with those multinational corporations so then India always felt and they planned accordingly to develop more advanced human resources so that they can cope up with the current new situation. Next is market orientations. Market orientation. Market orientation. Dear friends, let me tell you one thing. That previously it was a seller's market. Mainly I would like to tell you, previously it was a seller's market. But later on, what happened? As the new economic policy came, previously as I told you, it was a selling concept. See, before 1991, there was selling concept there was selling concept but as the new economic policy came the there was a complete shift from selling concept to marketing concepts just say why did it happen as the new economic policy came new economic policy came there was shift from selling concept to selling concept to marketing concepts selling concept to marketing concept all the companies were mainly targeting the customers they were mainly trying to know the desires, preferences, liking, taste, tastes of the consumers, customers and accordingly they were bringing the products according to the need or the necessities or the desires of the customers. So just see this point market orientation before 1991 there was a selling concept. So this was changed. Now shift was there from selling, from selling to marketing concept that means the new concept was a marketing concept then we go to the penultimate point after that we'll go to the last point loss of budgetary loss of budgetary budgetary support loss of budgetary support to public sector loss of budgetary support to public sector loss of budgetary support to public sector now try to understand what is the meaning of this 
what is the main thing in this point before 1991 before the year 1991 if any public sector try to understand before the year 1991 if any public sector suffered losses then those losses were made good by the government now i'll just pause here between what is the meaning of made good that means that losses was fulfilled whatever loss was that was fulfilled that is what i told any loss which was suffered by the public sector that is before 1991 prior to 1991 if any uh, public sector units suffered losses that losses were made good by the government by sanctioning special funds by sanctioning special funds from where where did they get these special funds by getting special funds from budgets but as the new economic policy came it was not the same thing like before 1991 now the public sectors had to run on their own and with their own capabilities with their own resources with their own techniques and if they have to be and if they want to do it to be in the market they have to utilize their resources and do the best with the greatest efficiencies and if there would have been losses there would have been chances of disinvestment in other words let me tell you that on uh, if they wanted to survive the public uh, companies wanted public sector companies wanted to survive the public sector units wanted to survive then they have to do with their own resources nobody was there to help and if they could not do it then they had to face in the disinvestment they had to face disinvestment so on the whole you see dear students that globalization liberalization and privatization brought a great impact on the indian economy and indian economy was doing great with the new economic policy and the main thing here was that they were producing things according to the needs and desires of the customers then we go with the last one last point export a matter of export last point this is export a matter of survival export a matter of survival now can you guess from this point what is exports a matter of survival that means here exports we are talking about so now see with the new economic policy made as the new economic policy came the restrictions were many restrictions were removed and with the new economic policy after 1991 the removal of restrictions as i already told were removed and external trade became more and more liberal with the new economic new trade policy of the new economic policy the external trade became more and more liberal now what happened was as it was made more liberal indian companies tried to do more and more exports they tried to uh, go through with more and more exports to earn lot of foreign exchange so that they can earn more money more foreign exchange for the nation and to become more stronger and stronger so as the export policy the external trade was made liberal they started more exports and they earned lot of money lot of foreign exchanges now we saw one thing that many companies many companies turnover many companies turnover increased by two times 2.5 times or three times by following a very vibrant export policy and they set up a and they set up a export divisions a good export division we saw that many of them set up very good export divisions through which they exported the goods and earned lot of foreign exchange so my dear friends i come to the end of this session 
and I taught about the last was I taught about eight points in this one make sure that you go through this lesson well and we are going to upload your assignments shortly on the ERP so make notes of this study this lesson well video lecture well and answer those assignments nicely and send to us back thank you very much thank you